This epic 2020 election cycle started just weeks after President Donald Trump took office when he filed for re-election and held a rally in Florida. Not too long after that, potential challengers started showing up in New Hampshire. Hey, John Delaney was first to officially throw his hat in the ring, but the first to make a real splash here was a pugnacious lawyer with a knack for publicity. Donald Trump's worst nightmare. I believe we cannot be the party of turning the other cheek. It's safe to say Michael Avenatti took his fights a little too far. He's now a convicted felon awaiting a prison sentence for extortion and embezzlement. It is rigged. But there were others who opted for a more traditional approach and made a real impact. Jason Kander started a conversation about voting laws that sparked a challenge to Secretary of State Bill Gardner. This is, in a lot of ways, ground zero for voter suppression. Those accusations ultimately fell short as Gardner held on to his post, an early indicator the so-called establishment wasn't ready to be toppled just yet. As the primary race got underway, several Democrats sought that mainstream, moderate support, but none seemed to be able to emerge from the shadow of the former vice president, Joe Biden. Elizabeth Warren led the charge for a record number of women running for president. Her story of a humble upbringing and her detailed plans for change brought her to the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire and briefly to the top of the polls here. I made the decision up front. I was not going to spend my time sucking up to corporate executives and billionaires and doing a bunch of closed door fundraisers. I was going to do this entirely from the grassroots up. Meantime, Biden saw his lead begin to fade as his campaign took him elsewhere. And when he was here, he made mistakes on the stump in cities like Keene. I love this place. I love, look, what's not to like about Vermont in terms of the beauty of it? And what a neat town. President Trump clearly didn't like the legion of Democratic candidates trying to grab a piece of his former New Hampshire primary stage. He put on a massive show of strength, packing to the rafters once again the SNHU arena and striking an optimistic tone in a one-on-one -on -one interview with News 9. If we get the House, we hold the Senate, we keep the presidency, we're going to have great health care. The dynamic campaign season intensified, giving us memorable and unique New Hampshire moments. Joe Sestak walking from the Connecticut River to the seacoast and stopping along the way to campaign in a jail. Decorated Iraq war veteran Seth Moulton sharing his personal struggle with PTSD. Tulsi Gabbard making the Granite State her temporary home. We feel welcomed to join the community and to be a part of the conversation. Two young upstart candidates, Andrew Yang and Pete Buttigieg, connected with voters in ways that transformed them from unknown outsiders to household names among Democrats. The opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Buttigieg, an Afghanistan veteran and Midwestern mayor, rode a wave of support to a second place finish here. Thank you, New Hampshire! In the end, Bernie Sanders was able to go back to back, pulling off the rare repeat victory in competitive first in the nation primaries. But New Hampshire turned out to be one of his last consequential wins. As COVID-19 halted the race and much of American life, Joe Biden consolidated party support. When the campaign reemerged this summer, New Hampshire remained a touchstone. Although Biden finished fifth here in February, he made a connection with a Concord area boy over their shared struggle with stuttering. It would become one of the inspirational stories of his campaign. I'm just a regular kid, and in a short amount of time, Joe Biden made me more confident about something that's bothered me my whole life. And in the last few months, President Trump has twice flown into the Granite State for open air rallies mocking his opponent's unwillingness to return to full-fledged campaigning amid the pandemic. He's constantly putting the lid on. Constantly putting the lid on. The lid means, I guess it's referring to a garbage can, right? You put the lid. Tomorrow, it will be the voters putting a lid on the 2020 election. So it's probably important to add the voters will have their lid, but the count of all the legal votes could take a little bit longer to sort out. So the 2020 saga could stretch out for a few more days while everything is made official. Oh.